Welcome to another edition of What the Fuck Happenings Here in Mendham. Alright, enough of that shit. Uh, anyway, new microphone, so we'll see how it works out. One dollar sound, USB sound card from China, right? You just plug it in and plug a mic into it and it actually works on Linux. Seems to anyway. So, there, the one dollar solution. Excellent. <clears throat> I bought another one, so I'll be able to show it to you next time. Well, next time being t two weeks or whatever it'll take to get here, three. <laughs> but anyway, can't beat the price. No immediate gratification, but, uh, you know, it's still pretty good. Anyway, um, yeah, so not terribly important. But, um, yeah, it's just nice that something works for a change. I bought a $3 microphone of this variety plastic, uh, you know, talking to this, but total failure, way too weak a signal and you amplify it, makes way too much noise, so totally lost on that one. Anyway, uh, so enough fun technology stuff. Eventually I will do these Linux videos uh, someday. I mean, I've been using it for like six months now, uh, almost entirely. I haven't, haven't even booted up a Windows XP even for like two months so um, yeah not missing it which is nice you know nice to be liberated from uh, Windows so alright so on with business um, I will probably debate the Logan idiot uh, person um, and apparently I have to do it on some other guy's channel, which is okay. Um, his channel seems benign enough, just some sort of, uh, I don't know, happy channel of, you know, grow your own food kind of stuff and, you know, blah, 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 blah. No, nothing wrong with giving people, <laughs> you know, advice about how to do stuff, and so I like that. Um, you know, I don't know if it comes veiled in any other bullshit, but, uh, whatever. Seems, that person seems more, uh, tolerable than the person I'm supposed to be debating, but anyway, we'll see how that goes. I'm supposed to be the moderator. Anyway, um, you know, I don't see much coming of it. Um, you know, just, I, I mean, people seem very, um, uh, superficial and how they think about everything, and, uh, you know, so I guess that's what I'll talk about a little bit. It's just the frustrating part is that, you, look, there's really simple things. So, so you have this nihilist thing, and that comes in these weird forms of the modern mystic, the amazing atheist, Hoffladay, and even Pirro. And they all have something in common, which is an ability to just say, it's not my problem, I don't have to fix it, uh, <laughs> whatever, it's just the way things are. Um, you know, no sense that if it's broken, it has to be fixed. Not that it just needs to be fixed, that you actually have to fix it, or what you're doing is unethical. So, you know, we have this problem, like Piro just keeps promising the future is going to give everybody all these, these bailout rights, that somehow when they're <laughs> three years old, they'll be able to say, gee, this place smells, can I go somewhere else? And, you know, you can get, uh, you know, instantly evaporated or something. Um, you know, you just find it, oh, anything, you know. You just don't like even the stub toe. And you just say, I don't want to be bothered having stub toes. It's just not worth it. Um, <laughs> you know. Um, but just this promise that somehow he's going to create this future where all of the problems will be solved. And yet there's no evidence he's going to ever solve a single one of the problems. Um, and so he'll just keep making excuses. So I'd say that's almost less malicious than the more overt uh, people who think, like the modern mystic, that somehow, in spite of the fact that he knows every revolution requires single individuals to stand up and revolt, and then become a group of individuals that revolt, that every single one <laughs> requires people to join, to um, participate in the movement. The movement can't move if no one joins the movement. If everybody, everybody says the future is just the future. <laughs> it's going to happen. Whatever is going to happen is going to happen. 
then yes, they're just going to do what they like to do, and they're not going to bother saying, oh, I have to do that movement thing. Because, but because the movement thing is always going to be inconvenient. It's never going to be, like, profitable. You're not going to make a million dollars, you know, uh, stopping rape or something. It's just not going to, you know, not going to be profitable, uh, likely, for you personally. And in most cases, being a revolutionary means you might get killed. You know, you might get captured and shot and thrown in a ditch, that kind of shit. So, um... Yeah, it's just not going to happen if you're waiting for your self-interest to say, oh yes, it's in my self-interest to do it, my personal self-interest. So obviously it's going to require you to have thoughts where you recognize, uh, yeah, the war can't get won if, if nobody shows up. If nobody goes on the boats overseas to fight the Nazis, then the Nazis win. That kind of, you know, it's just that simple. And you're saying, how could a smart people miss miss that? How could they how could they sit there and, and argue as if they are not playing a role in one way or another in terms of getting people onto the ships that somebody has to encourage people to go on the boat they have to say thank you oh thank you thank you thank you for saving us they have to do things to if, if they're not going to actually go on the boat they have to actually do something to support the idea of going on the boat they have to give them like candy or jelly beans and say thank you I you and promise them their vagina in the future when they get back you can have my vagina for free <laughs> you know when you get back you know after you win you know you have to do something to you have to play a part or the future is shit so if you want the future to be shit then just read a shit script that you know is shit that the script just says I'm a selfish kind I'm just gonna do with stuff I want to do I'm not gonna pay any attention to any other problems that's obviously a shit script. It doesn't win wars. It doesn't fix anything. It's not the repairman script. It's not the janitor script. It's the useless fuckhead script. And you're saying a smart person can't miss that? They can't possibly be ignorant of that process having to take place, and that's part of the determinism. And if the world is going to be determined, if it's written on the CD already, that the world is saved, <laughs> it has to be written that there's people who recognize they have to do it. They have to do the saving. They have to have the thought. And it says, oh shit, I don't want to do that, but got to save the world. And she did promise me her vagina. So pretty cool. I got something to, to die for. You know, something like that. You know, it's just, you're saying, no, people can't be that stupid. You know, and then you have people like the amazing atheist. I, I, I will, I, I want, he did his second to whatever. Uh, chaos is fun video or something <laughs> you know maybe it's the third by now I don't I, I just you know people don't <laughs> you know I think it's worth uh, um, responding to so I will respond to it eventually I mean I have to watch it first of course but I'm just saying um, you know people don't people complain about everything it's just I don't know, commenters are annoying a lot of the time um, you know they're very inconsistent and so you're saying okay some guy that I like says do this and then some guy that I like says do that and this and that aren't the same thing and um, you know and I guess I shouldn't care and most of the time I don't care and that's quite obvious but you know when people do rag and complain I do you know okay whatever <laughs> you know it's just really annoying um, I mean, obviously, if I do something, it's because I thought there was some value in doing it. And it's this backseat driving saying, you shouldn't have done that. That was a waste of time. Mm -hmm. Fuck you. Uh, but that's another subject. So, so anyway, so you have people like the Amazing Atheist, not a stupid person. But, I mean, just missing this one huge fact, you know, that value exists. That, you know, the feeling things on planet Earth are all little pieces of value and they they can manifest as torture or comfort they can they can have uh, um, a better time or a worse time here on earth their existence can be um, there's a difference between a nail in their eye and a cupcake eating you know that that's 
and that's what's at stake and so we're all involved in that process of deciding who gets killed <laughs> deciding how to get killed um, deciding what the fate of consciousness is on this planet it's all our responsibility we're all playing a role in its function and uh, the key word would be I guess maintenance um, we're feeding it you know by participating in it and so the obligation is if you don't think it's something worth maintaining you have to say it's not worth maintaining <laughs> at minimum and um, if you know you're really sensible you say I have to do a little bit more than that and maybe encourage other people to recognize they got to vote against it too you know um, but I mean yeah it's not it's not that it's not philosophically it's not a complex subject so in a sense what are we de what, what is there to debate except how obnoxiously daydreaming and silly are you going to be like Piro he's just silly so you know his last video was taking the word spirituality and recovering it so now he's he's saying the word spirituality just means you you have a warm fuzzy feeling about chocolate chip cookies and that's spirituality you, you know just to just blow up language language doesn't mean anything context doesn't mean anything you know it's just a you know it's just nonsense so to pretend not to offend <laughs> you know the spiritualists he'll re-modify their word into something they would never agree that it's as trivial as that it's trivial as that uh, but just to, for the sake of so he can say he's not against it you know he, he's, he's for it you know he's, he's compatible with it um, when he's not compatible with what they believe it to be he's compatible with a lie you know a, a big pile of crap um, but you know what are you going to do with people who won't even stick to vocabulary you know they won't even allow words to mean something consistently <laughs> you know you, you can't even communicate with them um, so um, you know there's a lot of dilemmas here I guess this camera on my head that high <sighs> don't need to be that tall um, so yeah so and so the arguments are really simple you know just about the fact that if you had to do the actual killing so it's a, it's like the vegetarian argument if a lot for a lot of people if they had to go out and actually kill the little piglets and they, you know they had to gut them and do all this the, the horror stuff they wouldn't eat the meat they wouldn't do it they, they wouldn't have the heart to do it themselves and if they had to be the ones who actually um, to support their their life affirming perception or, or, or declarations if they're the ones who had to actually feed the lion cubs to you know the black adder and to the the you know, had to sit there and drop them drop the little baby lion cubs into the the pit of <laughs> you know hyenas to get ripped to pieces and they could see the fear in the little cub you know the cub had to be afraid for hours just while they're dangling it over the hyenas and they had to see the fear they'd say it wasn't worth it they couldn't do it so what's the argument the argument is is they just they can't be honest they just can't live an honest life they'll pretend it's okay as long as they don't have to really accept responsibility for what they've hired somebody else to do they've hired nature to do it essentially could um, be a new post nature do the killing you know and uh, you know that's it's just so rude you know, speaking of rude, it's, you know, it's probably, you know, I really get these comments, here, but, but all these people are just so, what is wrong with these? There's so many people are so fucking sick. You know, all they're thinking about is black dicks and things, and they're just, you're just like, what the fuck is that shit? Who who could give a crap? They're, they're full of conversation, their conversation is about pee and poo and anuses, and they're, all, they're totally obsessed with this shit. It's like, <laughs> what, the, what the fuck? Why, and and uh, I, I just don't know why they're communicating with me as if I could give a shit. Uh, you know, uh, Inmendum is too 
chatty and petty. I wonder if he sits down when he pees. Yeah, well, you know, <laughs> again, what 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 use is this mush? Ugh, people. Anyway, they're just so useless. Might as well moot if they're going to be doing commenting. But it's always just one person. They're just it's just this whole troll thing. You know, these people who get obsessed and they just you know, they're obsessed. And you're saying how how did they think how did they think <laughs> I'm well, I get they're not thinking, you know, there must be you know, their brains are broken, so they're not seeing anything in any proper perspective. Maybe they think I'm the CIA or something. You know, uh I don't you know, just really bizarre. All right. So anyway, back to where I was. Uh, I thought I might read some comments, so that's why I had the comment page loaded, but I can't find it now. So many pages to choose from. It should should be here. Is that it? Yeah, that's it. Um. Uh, you know, some of these comments aren't bad, but I just mean you know, blah 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 blah. blah. Uh. <laughs> anyway. Um. So yeah, there's just these simple arguments about this is just an imposition, this life thing. The to have what you want, you know the world is going to have all this stuff where people are going to pay horrible prices for your good luck. Okay, so every bit of good luck you have means somebody else is getting the bad luck kind of thing. And I've sort of made the analogies that things that we commonly think of as really great things that somehow make the world a better place, like the Olympics or something, this idea of, of rewarding the champion. If you really thought about it, you'd realize the Olympics makes a lot more losers than it makes winners. And I mean losers in a sense of they're just going to spend the rest of their life saying, whoa, what if? If only I didn't have my period on the Olympics day. You know, if only, you know, they're going to be, you know, their their life is ruined, you know, by their losing. Um, you know, their their greatest ambition, their greatest love. It's like losing your greatest love. It's like having your wife die. I mean, for for one of these Olympic people, you know, one of these people obsessed with a sport. Yeah, it's like having their wife die. I mean, it's it's a really horrible thing that happens to them when they lose. <laughs> okay, when they think they should have won, that's going to be hard to live with. Um, so you're creating more of that than you are this good feeling about, oh, I won. And then the person who wins, like I said, it wears off <laughs> when they realize they still have to live a life. And um, so then they either get obsessed with winning two or three of these things so they can prove they're the greatest ever. Or they, you know, say life is over and they just end up getting drunk for the rest of their life because they can't figure out that anything else means anything. I'm just saying there's lots of tragic psychology to all of this stuff and it's right there in front of us it's not like it's a mystery or hidden and uh, so there's what's what are you defending when you defend the winners are worth it when we see that the winning isn't worth it there's nothing charming about the winners <laughs> you know they don't they don't even live charmed lives they squander you know it, it's like even the wealthy you can just look at them they're 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 miserable if they if they don't if they can't spend you know a hundred thousand dollars a day you know on bullshit their life is ruined you know if if everything isn't perfect and their little fake you know uh, uh, superficial uh, uh, ruby diamond world if all the diamonds aren't polished right oh they're all depressed and can't stand life anymore you know they're, they're not satisfied. They're not, you know, and, and they're not, they're certainly not doing anything glorious. The, I mean, the, the lives you can have the most respect for are the ones that, where the guy did die on the battlefield or something. That's the most glorious life. And it's certainly not something you want to do. Yet, it's, it's the only one that's really the winners. The real winners are the ones who actually do fix something. The only ones that actually do accomplish something. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, but you wouldn't want to live their life. So what are we playing this game for? It's a stupid, idiotic, addictive game. You can 
illustrate it in so many ways. I mean, uh, if we put Vulcans on on Mars, and they're black Vulcans, <laughs> right? <laughs> You're not going to care about them, you know. It, it, our our subjective, it's all just subjective bigotries and prejudices. You know, if they're too ugly, if I make them ugly, you know, or retarded or something else, that you, there's you'll dismiss them for. You'll find a way to say it doesn't matter what happens. They've already become alien, just like the Native Americans were alien to the Europeans, even though it's their twenty thousand years ago it was their brother and sister. Uh, you know, that's the real psychology. So, wh what are we? What's admirable about any of it? And, and what are you again? What are you defending? Uh, nobody's weeping because the Martians don't exist. So, we know that you really couldn't care if there was if there was Martians and they were Holocaust. That you would care, but if there was never any Martians and they still don't exist, that doesn't bother you. Does that like that makes any sense at all? You know, only anim only organisms that actually did exist can you lament the fact that they don't exist now. So you can feel bad for Tyrannosauruses because they did exist and now they don't. But I could make a billion other forms of dinosaur, like six-legged dinosaurs or something, or you know, or some kangaroo dinosaur, some other kind of variety that never existed. And you couldn't care less if they existed or not because, oh, well, they never existed, so therefore I can't care. And you can't see how that's just psychology that has nothing to do with being logical or sensible. So obviously if you did the logical argument, there's no way to defend your own love because it's so subjective and so personally biased that, you know, you clearly don't care unless it somehow connects to your survival in some in some way. It has to be your family or your genes or your some little stupid thing that connects it to you and once it's connected to you then you can care. So maybe if I could explain to the Europeans that the North American Indians were their ancestors 20,000 years ago then maybe they wouldn't have killed them because then they would connect them to them and then they would see European in them. They would say oh I can still see the you know so something familiar but they don't see the familiarity, then it doesn't exist because they can't they can't see it intellectually. They can only see it emotionally. Somehow it has to be cute. It has to has to has to stir them in this stupid primitive touchy feely way, um, like a sexual preference or something. You know, like everybody should be able even kids should be able to figure out that their sexual preferences are not logical statements about what really is better than something else. That clearly your preferences or like food preferences or something are completely disconnected from some grand logical equation where something earned uh, your appreciation. Didn't earn it. It just got, you got conditioned into it. That's it. And now it's your familiar thing, your nation, your language. Well, language is a little difficult because there are languages that are just plain inefficient. So there are languages that are better than other languages just because they have, they're more logically constructed. Some languages are pretty illogically constructed. But I'm just saying so many things are just subjective. And we can certainly identify that in this whole this whole passion for the game is just a subjective passion. It just has to do with your sense of unfulfilled achievement, a, a sense of you haven't finished yet. So therefore the game must continue forever and ever somehow because you haven't somehow finished yet. And it, clearly part of that I guess is investing in you have to rationalize excuses for having kids. So. But there still are people who are childless who still think somehow humans need to exist. And you're saying, why do they think that? <laughs> you know, especially looking at the average human. Again, why would I... I wouldn't even build a lifeboat to save Homer Simpson. You know what I mean? I wouldn't... I wouldn't... 
I wouldn't bother trying to get his genetic code into the future. I'd see no purpose in it. I, I, there's no way it can work out. There's no way it's going to be a good idea. And I don't know how people can't look at the average human on Earth and say, why would I endorse making more of those? Why would I say that's a good idea? I mean, that's, you know, and again, the biological argument is so obvious because everything about nature is destroying, you know, 1,000 little child Mr. Spocks to make one adult Mr. Spock. That's what nature does. It, it, <laughs> it just kills and kills and kills. The whole point is to destroy 99% of something so only the winners reproduce and the losers are forgotten. That's all that nature does. And any idiot can say, well that doesn't make any sense. You destroy 999 of something to preserve one? To make one? It doesn't make any sense. I, you know, 99 losers for one winner? I mean, it just doesn't make any logical sense. It's too high a price to pay. Uh, it's, it's <laughs> you know, if I had to do it, if I had to be the 99, I wouldn't do it. I'd say that's idiotic. If I have to die 99 times before I get to be, I get to be a full grown up once, but 99 times I have to be killed before I get there. I wouldn't play that game. You couldn't pay me to play that game. And yet I have to argue with people about why they don't have a right to force me to play that game. Um, why they think it's a good idea. You know, they'd sign up for it, and so therefore they can sign me up for it. So that's the other. The imposition argument is kind of a separate argument. I mean, you have the logical argument about why it's poison. And then you have the even better argument <laughs> that regardless, you don't have any right to impose it until you can prove it's not poison that is you're just saying it I'll just say it's worth it it's worth killing the nine lion cubs for the one adult lion um, you know go through all of the the, the 10,000 octopuses for the one octopus the 10,000 baby sea turtles for the one turtle um, you say it's worth it now the point is though if it, if that's fine if you were just imposing it on yourself if you had to be the 10,000 losers to be the one-time winner and that was a game you decide to play then I'll be fine but it's not going to be you it's going to be somebody else <laughs> you know and where do you have the right to impose it on somebody else when you really can't prove it makes sense you can't prove that that's logically sensible that it's the right answer. Making more of them is the right answer. I mean, this is almost as obvious as the Frankenstein analogy. This is almost as obvious as saying to the Dr. Frankenstein, look, you're a smart man. You, you can't figure out that you're probably going to get this wrong more times than you're going to get it right. That you really haven't proven you can do this <laughs> responsibly or correctly. You're just hoping it's all going to be okay and do you really have the right to sit there and torture Frankenstein's monsters do you really have a right to keep imposing on them to play some silly game because you want to reanimate dead things for some personal what ego points I did it I played God so so you get the I played God medal and you can wear it and say look how smart I was I played God I had God powers and uh, the monsters get all the pain. That's disgusting. <laughs> you know, uh, it's so illogical. It's so wrong. Uh, yeah. So yeah, this is, you know, people have commented. You know, a few of them get it here. They say, "Look, the argument's already. We already got the argument. We just now need a way to present the argument uh, to the idiocracy in a form they can consume." Um, you know, we have to, um, there's steps, okay, <laughs> like, like a lot of, like a lot of programs, you need steps, people have to go through the steps, because they can't, apparently, they need a recipe, they need a 
do first do this and then do this and you have to get them you know you have to lead them uh, by their little hand through the process um, and um, you know there's um, that's always a trick you know is how to how to um, what order and in what way you construct a presentation of reality that will be um, that'll turn the keys in the right order in any brain so no matter how stupid or ignorant or delusional or fucked the brain is the if you do this right order of key thing they'll go oh okay I get that uh, I get it now ah yeah imposing is wrong <laughs> you know me hiring other people to rape <laughs> that's wrong uh, you know, having somebody else do the dirty work and hiring hitmen, that's wrong. I mean, you know, they figure it out. Um, I can't endorse the winner without endorsing the creation of the losers. Uh, you know, simple logic. So, yeah, so uh, there's probably no point in me making another. So, uh, point uh so yeah so it is there's an art to this unfortunately um in terms of getting the notes organized in a manner that the melody can be understood you know there's some music that just about anybody could listen to it and say all right it doesn't you know doesn't give me a boner but yeah that's pretty nice <laughs> you know, and there's other kinds of music where, yeah, 50% of the people say, fuck, that's uh, obnoxiously irritating, and 50% will say, oh, it's cool. Um, so what you're looking for is that, you know, perfectly constructed bit of, you know, whatever, Bachian, you know, perfection. <sighs> Who did that oxygen one, right? Is it oxygen or air? Air. Is that Bach? See, there's piece, some pieces that are just so good. You'd say, nobody could dislike this music. I mean, nobody. Yeah, nobody. Yeah, I was trying to think of what that other one is from that... Uh, one of those Vietnam War movies where the guy's slowly in slow motion dying and there was that music they played and some sort of Italian term or something probably get some sort of religious thing but anyway um, yeah who could hate that I mean nobody rational <laughs> you know, nobody rational could say that's noise it just couldn't happen I don't think so that's kind of the thing you're trying to do with these arguments is there's a way of telling the story of our reality this you know bad circumstance of this run amuck DNA contest and the fact that it's grown all the way into this mega organism you know with this mega brain doing vocabulary can creating tools can make nuclear bombs can do all kinds of you know make make a bunch of weapons that aren't that don't are no longer biological can make weapons that are actually thought weapons uh, you know weapons of of rhetoric, um, you know, the death tax. <laughs> you know, they can, they can create stupid cliches and pervert statistics and do all kinds of malicious hate crimey things. You know, come up with all kind of slangy, you know, whoppy, kikey, nigger kind of language to try to hurt people and diminish them. And you know, and yeah, so that's what we become. This this monster. Uh, built by this DNA molecule, and all these monsters have no under no, no sense innately of the idea of sustainability. <laughs> you know, because their initial creation, they will attempt to decimate everything around them and take all the space from any competing DNA. And there's always a there's always the <sighs> The DNA fights back, so we're we're fighting a, a, a machine that will always 
reflect it will always it will always it will never allow you to unsustain uh, um, unsustainably grow so if if you're too successful you become food if you're um, if you decimate all the other organisms you starve to death <laughs> you know if you shit too much in the water you don't succeed I mean it's just you know if you pile up too much waste I and mean, you know there's always this check and balance that will not let you win easy you have to win over this long run it's never this short race it's this long race and even humans the fact that most humans have so little perspective about how short a race the human race has won run with an informed intelligence they barely survived it in terms of the last hundred years is where it really grew and where we're really fully intelligent and it we're on the brink of decimating the environment and um, not paying any attention to you know the fact that we are pulling too much energy out of the ground and that we're um, you know destroying the fertility of the planet its capacity to feed all these people without killing them with waste um, so it's like there's no plan to fix their own unsustainability they just think that somehow <laughs> some magic process is going to show up and fix it and it's not and uh, you know it's like the debt just keep adding on to it it doesn't make any difference it's not a problem when of course it's a huge problem when somebody has to pay it back when the insurance is actually needed if you've already spent the money in the in the fund and there's no money in the fund and the flood comes and you got no money and that's what they've done they've taken all the mechanisms that existed to protect us against crisis and they've squandered the the value of them they've put IOUs in them you know it's it's like uh, catch 22 good movie good book but I mean the movie was really quite good uh, you know watch it um, uh, life is ludicrous and the way humans are doing it we're proving that even with intelligence you can't make it work because the the organism is in, is is not the general function is still animalistic even when it's informed and intelligent um, well and there's just no way to take the animal there's no way to sanitize the environment to create a life that doesn't have the key ingredients which are competition and ego without these things you wouldn't play the game so you can't really live without them because there'd be no reason there'd be no passion there'd be no you know without the without the success and failure game there's no game and but intellectually you can know there's no that's not a, a rational game to play but it is a game that once you're alive and you want to preserve your comfort you will play it because now you're being extorted you're being threatened <laughs> okay with harm if you don't play and that we can understand that's visceral that's right in your face um, and uh, it's not just an abstract image of a horror that's an image that you can see yourself in it's not an image with other people in it it's an image with you in it and that matters to people and it shouldn't but it does but that's evidence of the failure of our intelligence that our intelligence hasn't been able to um, or, uh, organize these kind of words and organize them in such a way as that people understand the difference be between their psychology and their intelligence and people have just let the two blend together they're just using their intelligence to scheme for the gratification of their psychology <laughs> and it should be the other way around the intelligence should be pulling the string on the puppet of your psychology and yes you'll concede that the puppets need to 
fornicate and do certain things, but that the uh, you don't let the puppets, um, you know, uh, um, make important decisions because they're stupid puppets. And the important decisions you make with your brain, your intelligence, your knowledge, and your knowledge is, I know it's not a good game, and I know imposing on other people is wrong, and I shouldn't be creating things when I can't guarantee the welfare of the thing I created. I mean, that's just logical. I can't guarantee its welfare. What ass, What kind of asshole imposes that kind of risk? It's like, again, me taking somebody's life savings and saying, I'm going to do them a favor and go uh, risk it in Las Vegas. Nobody would think that's responsible or decent or kind or nice or the right thing to do. Everybody knows it wouldn't be. All right. These are all arguments in one way or another I've made before, so it might be redundant. Well, because you need to be. <laughs> yeah, that's another point. You really do need to just keep, you can't just hit them in the head once, you know. Get it, asshole? You have to keep bashing it in, you know, over and over. Um, because they're all cement heads. And you have to crack this, this cement of bullshit that they're clinging to. This notion of, of accomplishment and purpose. Um, that there's some redeeming function in all of this, you know, when all there is is wasted suffering. And now, suffering imposed um, by a kind of malicious ignorance. Yet the knowledge to know it's a bad game is right in front of people, and they're just belligerently and maliciously saying, I don't wish to pay any attention. Even though, again, when it's right in front of their face. Even when their hypocrisy is overt. Like all of the, the meat eaters who couldn't go out and do the slaughtering themselves. You know, couldn't, uh, couldn't go out and kill Babe the pig. <laughs> you know, couldn't do it. Anyway. So, yeah, that's probably enough. So, kind of a cliche in Mendham rant, uh, or complaint, complaint, yeah. lament, that's it. I'm sort of a lamenter. Alright, so anyway, <laughs> yeah, so that's, you know, nothing else is news, I don't think. Um, yeah, I don't think there's any news, <laughs> so <laughs> that's all you get. So, who knows what videos I will make this week. We'll see what I do. You know, like I said, I do want to do a few response videos. And, I, uh, you know, we'll see about the, like I said, the, this, this idea of debating people that don't have any real, uh, there's no evidence that they make deep and profound arguments, <laughs> you know, is a little silly. But, um, uh, it looks like I'm going to waste an hour doing it or something. <laughs> we'll see. But anyway, um, I guess it's only an hour, right? No big deal. Anyway, until next time, and such, so forth and whatnot. Yeah, that's really, that's it. Just keep it. <laughs> That'll do, pig. Yeah. <laughs>